In this video, we take a look at suitable test data. So once you've written a program, you need to be able to identify and suggest suitable data that you could use to test it in a variety of scenarios. Now, in order to do this, we're going to look at a very simple program that's shown on the screen, and we're going to suggest some types of test data you might use and why. So I've identified 10 separate tests here and 10 bits of test data we could use. If we take a quick look at the program, we can see it prints, uh, it prints three lines of text to the screen. So it's like a menu system. One, new game, two, save game, and three, play game. We set choice to zero, and then we're going to say, while choice is less than one or greater to three, we're gonna keep prompting them to enter a choice. So the idea is we want them to enter one, two or three, and if they enter anything else, we keep prompting them. Well, the first thing you should always try and do is test for no data being entered at all. And this is a special case. This isn't strictly what we call invalid data or erroneous data, but it certainly isn't something you want the user to do. So I will check whether the program um, behaves correctly when no data is entered. We then have what the exam board call erroneous data, and that's data which should be rejected by the program. Now, in this situation, the program should only be accepting one, two or three. Anything else, therefore, according to the exam, will be considered erroneous data. Now, you can't possibly test for every single piece of erroneous data, but you should test for a range. So you can see I'm checking what happens if they enter a character, test two. What happens if they enter a symbol, test three. I'm then checking some numbers. So what happens if they enter minus six, which is below the range, eight above the range? What happens if they enter 2.5? Now in this situation, the program would actually accept 2.5 because it's in the range one to three. But of course, what we'd like is for the person to reject it. We'd want it only to accept the whole numbers one, two or three. So which of those should be considered erroneous data for our situation? We then want to be able to test what we call normal or typical data. Now this is any data which should be accepted by the program without causing errors. So with our program, we're wanting to accept the values one, two and three. So they would all be normal or typical data. So we have got a test here that's testing the input two. Now, why am I also not testing one and three as normal data? Well, let's have a quick look. You also need to know about boundary and extreme data. Now, this is data of the correct data type, which is on either edge of the accepted validation limits. So one and three are indeed what we consider normal data. But in this circumstance, they have a special category and that's boundary data because it's data of the correct type which exists at the correct valid limit. Now you've obviously probably worked out therefore that boundary data is also naught and four because remember the exam board's definition is data which is on either edge of the accepted validation limits. Of course, naught and four shouldn't be accepted. So they are also technically erroneous data. But once again, you're better off referring to these special cases as boundary data. Now, when being asked to identify suitable test data in the exam, you'll probably be given a slightly more complicated example than the one we've just shown you. So have a look at the image on the right here. What data could we use for this car park ticket machine software? Well, the first thing to note is there are lots of different variables here. You can see that um, the system is going to be charging different amounts depending on how long they stay, one hour, two hours, indeed arriving after 9.30. We can see there are special rates for a Sunday and in evenings. We can see there are certain times when the car park isn't even open. So we need to consider that in our test data. 
Now, there's a large variety of tests and therefore appropriate data that we could use. Here's just a few suggestions. Test whether someone can do half hour parking, an hour, an hour and a half and multiples thereof. What happens if it's a Sunday parking situation or evening parking past 7 p.m.? What about parking before 9.30 or after 9.30? And tests that involve entering data where someone's trying to park during invalid hours. So let's just recap. Test data needs to include a range of inputs. Normal or typical inputs is data which should be accepted by a program without causing error. Whereas erroneous inputs are data which should be rejected by the program. Boundary or extreme inputs is data of the correct type, which is on either edge of the accepted validation limits. So if the allowed range was one to 10, then boundary data would be naught and one and 10 and 11. Note that some of this data is actually also classified as normal or erroneous, but it has a special meaning in this situation. Thank you.